All right, sweethearts, what are you waiting for? Breakfast in bed? <laughs> Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and in this video, we're going to take a look at a really dope collaboration that I was super hyped for. So, War Games Atlantic sent us over a bunch of boxes of the new Reptilian Overlords Space Now miniatures, which are well, you might be familiar with it, but Reptilian Overlords is a really cool 3D artist that has a wide range of uh, miniatures out there. And they have their own subscription service that you can sign up for. They actually have some uh, a, a really cool tank and a lot of like really cool looking kind of characters for guard. Um, we featured them in the past on the site, so it's super dope to kind of see, you know, potentially on the sci-fi side of things, the first... 3D design to plastic collaboration that, that I know of, definitely with, uh, I think, on the sci-fi side of things, with War Games uh, Atlantic to actually come to fruition. So this is really neat and it's super affordable and I think that a lot of people out there might really like this for their army. So let's dive in, let's take a look, let's build up some of the miniatures and kind of have at it. So you can score the plastic version of these miniatures, of course, from War Games Atlantic. And they're normally their kits are right around $35. This one I think might be the first to be $39.99. And that might have something to do with the licensing, you know, making sure the artists get paid and stuff, uh, which is super important, right? But even then, it's 20, 20 miniatures for $39.99. And now don't forget too, I think on their site here. Yeah. So whenever you spend over $50 um, in shipping or in in the store you're going to get free shipping in your currency which actually another thing to talk about the pricing is in lower local, local currency here so they're not making any arbitrage besides like the normal fees and stuff to you know get you get your money and get you on board and get your order in whether it's the uk eu or here in the states canada dollar reduce you know um the folks down down in australia and things like that's solid like because we've seen that with another company how they basically have a markup of 50 percent at this point and it's kind of scummy yeah, call a spade a spade. It's, it's scummy. And uh, if the only way you make money is from arbitrage and, you know, some licensing deals, are you really making money? Like, that's just a house of cards at that point, I feel like. But I digress. So let's talk more about <laughs> something that's dope and has value. So not only does it have value in that regard, but you can also get a good deal on some bundles here too. So depending on how many you buy, I don't know if you're going to want 10 boxes of these. Maybe you're going wild. Maybe you're like, yo, Space Nam is my thing. They're gonna they're gonna be my contest cat of chance. Hey, that's cool. You know you can get them down to thirty bucks a box, which is which is wild. Free shipping and plus two. Remember, um, that's like two bucks a miniature. Even at, even at forty dollars, that's like two bucks a miniature. And when current Imperial Guardsmen, plastic Imperial Guardsmen from you know games like Warhammer, are basically five to six dollars a Guardsman. I, it's just it's just super value and this stuff is is so well done we already know the artists we already know the company that's put, put them in plastic like it just i can't think of a better arrangement you know i was really excited to see this and i was really even more excited to get them in my hands and i hope once we get them together uh that the scale is right and that these are going to make really great counts as and alternatives for imperial guardsmen so here's the box set, uh, and it's you know it's about the same size as the the other ones we've uh, we've gotten from uh, War Games Atlantic here. So I guess I haven't even uh, opened this bad boy up quite yet. So take a look here. Like it says on the box, 20 multi-part hard plastic 28 millimeter figures. Um, now the one thing that I always like to remind people about is that it doesn't come with bases. So you can get some like HDF bases or just use, you know, some 25 or 32 millimeter bases that you might have left over from Games Workshop or, you know, purchase somewhere else or even 3D print bases for, at this point in the game, right? Um, I don't feel like that's too big of an ask for the price. Uh, it's definitely not worth the extra, you know, 20 or 30 bucks that the other guys are charging for stuff like this. So here you can see the sprue and like I said, there's 20 guys in here. So there's gonna be five different sprues. So I imagine all the parts to make um, Four of them are going to be on here and as you can see there's four sets of legs on here so this is going to form the basis for all of your uh, uh conversions and assemblies here now it looks like two of them as we start getting a little closer in here looks like two are kind of flat one's kind of running stepping you could kind of go like that and have like a tactical rock or something under there and then you've got these two here this one looks pretty flat and then we've got this one over here that also looks flat. So none of those crouching legs or anything like that. Everything looks 
pretty usable, you know, and you can kind of mix it up and then you've got the bodies here and only one bigger uh, pack right here that you can use. But as far as weapons go, you got a plasma looking one, you got a sniper looking one, you got a flamethrower, like a very realistic flamethrower, which I feel like is pretty neat right there. Um, then you've got just the standard kind of rifle looking things. I don't, I don't know what kind of pattern that is. Uh, a grenade launcher as well, a drum fed grenade launcher, which looks pretty dope. Another flamer, so maybe this is like a Melta type of weapon here. So plenty of options and plenty of uh, poses uh, to actually use in this, which I think is pretty good. You got a big knife right here, another kind of shorter combat knife over here, which is nice. And then all sorts of different packs, tons of heads. You got some beret heads, um, some, um, it was, a, I guess, bandana or do-rag sort of heads. Uh, Peak cap here, mohawks. It really runs the gamut um, of different options that you're going to have in here. The only other thing that I could see that might be a bit of a detraction is that there's only one of the bigger packs right here, which you know it, it isn't. It is kind of what it is, I suppose. Um, I don't feel like it's a it's a deal breaker or anything like that because I feel like these guys might be trying trying to kind of travel light and such. Um, but yeah, so lots of different poses. Let's see, option, you know, poses and options here. So this is the painted miniatures here. Uh, looks like you can get up because we know this is two sets of legs right here, and it doesn't look like. I mean, just glancing at them, you can see this guy's running. That's the other one up there. So it looks like those are the two that are the same poses. I don't see anything obnoxious. You know, these none of these guys really look the same. Those are probably the two closest. But between the combination of you know twisting torsos and things, I think you get a really good mix here. And then here's a closer look at them on on the back. And it looks like yeah, his foot's kind of pushed down or something. I don't know exactly what's going on there, but we'll we'll try to make something similar just to give you an idea and then compare them to the guardsmen out here. So assembly-wise, you can see that uh, these are pretty tight. Like they look the part. They've got extra stowage and extra gear and things that you can glue on to really kind of give them that that extra cooler look. Um, the, you're gonna have to unfortunately use all face, you know, bare heads, so to speak, because there isn't any like helmeted heads here. But at that point, you're you're already gonna be painting a bunch of uh, flesh and everything like that. So I don't feel like that's a deal breaker. We mounted these to 25 millimeter bases from Games Workshop, the beveled edge bases, and they they work pretty well. I don't think I'd put them on 32s. And now we know with the new Imperial Guardsmen that they are uh, actually come on um, 25 millimeter bases. Commands come on 32. As that comes into focus here, you can see the flak jacket looking uh, looking one here with the cap and a bolter type weapon, which I didn't even see on that, uh, that sprue there. So either I'm getting old or uh, my eyes are betraying me and extra packs right there. Big old uh, knife, you call that a knife? And then this guy here, I, I really like, it looks like it's the melted kind of weapon, but there's a bunch that are kind of pushed down like that. And you can see, uh, you know, it's going to have the, uh, the at the ready, I guess, <laughs> sort of, sort of look there. And then again, no, no backpack on him. And he's kind of leaning forward, like ready to spring into action. And then of course, you know, you can always put these torsos on and kind of twist them a little bit. And then this is the same one that I was talking about there that looks, you can have it flat down and running like this. Or you could kind of do this and have like a little um, tactical rock or something on there. And then basically he's, you know, giving the signal to hold right there. It looks like, uh, was it Sergeant Ab Ab Apoon, I think, from uh, Aliens? Definitely giving me those vibes. And of course, their Katachan Colonel. And he's got a flashbang or some sort of grenade. I think it's a flashbang on there and a big old rifle. Because why wouldn't you? And yes, he is smoking a cigar. <laughs> Another glorious day in the core uh, for new miniatures of the guard. Now, I, <laughs> I don't know why, I don't know why, but I don't have any of my plastic guardsmen uh, close here, but we compared them to this guy right here and they are actually the same scale. So knowing what we know about the new plastic Cadians, these are actually very much in scale um, to be used in games of Warhammer 40K because they're gonna be about, the, the Cadians are a little bit wider, but not like the, the silly wider like they used to be. So I feel like they're gonna scale up almost perfect uh, with the with these uh, reptilian overlords uh, space now models. Um, so I feel like that is a huge win. And if those end up being like 60 bucks, like the Death Core plastics, I mean, at, at $40 and free shipping on orders over $50, I feel like as long as you're down with painting some, some flesh details, 
I feel like these are gonna make a really great alternative uh, to using the new Cadence, especially with the amount of heads and amount of options in this particular kit here. Um, you can even maybe use some of these guys. I don't wanna go as far as to say that they can be used as weapon teams quite yet, but the really cool thing about all that is that we know Reptilian Overlords has a bunch of 3D designs for stuff like that. So it is possible that maybe we'll get some weapon teams or at least some crewmen to use uh, in plastic maybe in the near future from that line right there. So very, very cool stuff to see. So can't say enough good things. Like I said, the real, the real kind of drawbacks to these are the fact that you don't get bases in here. And that's really the big one. Maybe the pack, maybe that you only get one pack to sprue. So you're only gonna get five of those packs, but I just don't feel like that's it. To me, it's not a deal breaker. I just don't personally want to paint flesh, but I'm really excited to see this collaboration because that is really neat. That and I have a bunch of Deathcore already, but give me some Deathcore Ogren and I'm all aboard the uh, the plastic <laughs> the plastic multi-part uh, kit train for sure right there. So that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching our unboxing build of the new uh, War Games Atlantic Reptilian Overlord Space Nam figures. Hopefully the first in what we'd like to see a lot more of uh, miniatures collaborations uh, between those two companies right there. So make sure you check them out, War Games Atlantic or ReptilianOverlords.com for those 3D uh, designs as well. And but before you go over there, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and follow all our videos. If you liked that video feature, consider supporting us over at Patreon.com and get back in the mail each month a miniature crate full of some of the stuff we review here as well as some of the top 3D artist designs out there too to help support what they're doing. Plus, discount coupon codes from some of those same manufacturers. They're yours to keep whether you cancel or stay on. Just It's totally up to you. Obviously, we want to keep you as happy as possible. So check it out over at patreon.com forward slash spiky.